joining us a bit. But um, today I would love to introduce our wonderful uh, friend and um, partner. Uh, this is Elizabeth Elisabetta from EP Advisory. Um, she will tell more about her and her experience. And you guys are in for a very practical workshop. I'm sure you'll learn um, a lot of really cool things um, about your CV and hopefully we'll be able to um, make your own a uh, very professional one already in the next few days and put it all into practice yeah so um yeah we'll keep the chat open i'm here to help with anything if you guys miss miss anything have any questions um both um, elizabeth and i will be happy to help and answer your questions so please hello over. hello 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 everybody victoria thank you very much for introducing me i'm so kindly and nice welcome everybody um before we start before i start talking about myself can you guys tell me where or which countries you are already um studying or already working in or maybe planning to so that i have a little bit of an idea then i can tailor my workshop um even better for you so if you can just pop here some countries um, that you are um, currently um, living in or planning to. Australia, Germany, that's great. Um, US, Turkey, Japan, UK. Um, Russia. Germany, Italy, Belgium, Austria, um, great. Um, Spain, wow, I love, I love the diversity. <laughs> um, okay, Italy, I'm planning to study in the UK, great. Do we know everything about the UK? Um, Spain, France, Germany. Okay, great. I think um, then um, everything that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be very relevant to all of you. Um, Amsterdam, Netherlands. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, myself and what we're going to talk about and then we can start. So i um, sharing my screen. Um, if there are any problems in terms of hearing me or anything, just please um, let me know. I hope you, you will be able to see. Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about CV uh, and we're going to talk mostly about do's and don'ts and must-haves um, of CV. If you are looking for a job in any of those countries, will be completely relevant. Uh, my name is Yiriza uh, I am the founder and CEO of EP Advisory. Uh, I'm also the creator of, um, about EP Advisory, I'll tell a little bit later, about YouTube project called Istori Pedia, Stay in Russian, or Stories of Your Location in English. If you haven't seen it yet, if you haven't seen the stories of those brave, bold, and awesome um, Russian speakers, uh, go ahead and check. Um, I write for Forbes. I also speak at conferences in the UK, Europe, and Russia. And my experience is 11 years of HR and recruitment in the UK. I was an ex-partner of a London-based recruitment agency before I set up EP Advisory three and a half years ago. Um, so um, EP Advisory, what is EP Advisory? How can I yeah, like this is better. Okay, so um, EP Advisory uh, was founded with a very um, simple but big ambition. We want to help professionals around the globe to find where they truly belong. Um, and by belong, we mean uh, we want to show you all the opportunities and everything that is there for you uh, beyond uh, uh, borders, uh, whether geographical borders, so outside the country you currently live in, organizational borders, outside the companies you are currently in, or personal borders. Maybe you want to change career and be, do something completely different to what you're doing now. Uh, we've worked with... Uh, 2,300 plus clients already. We have 97% success rate. Um, you can check reviews on Google and Facebook. We are very proud to have 100% <laughs> uh, five-star reviews. Um, and I personally, in my um, 14 years already, um, edited and looked at and reviewed over 40,000 CVs. This is not exaggeration. This is a very specific number. So I can tell you everything about the CV that you want to know. And in, in, in this workshop, I will alternate between CV and resume. I know there's a difference in America. They like to call it resume when it's shorter, CV when it's longer. But generally speaking, I would um, equal CV and resume in my workshop just for, for clarity. 
Um, we are career consultants. So we have career consultants trained in different countries, in different um, um, industries who help our clients get a job. From the first consultation where we figure out what you want to do, all the way to the job offer, and in most cases, visa, because we work with expats and um, people um, that require visa anyway. Uh, at the moment, we have 15 consultants, um, and on the website, you can see all the different industries and everything. Um, in terms of countries, we cover the UK. Um, this is our main hub, where our ba uh, office is based in London, and the majority of our team, half of the team, is in the UK. But we also have consultants in Netherlands, in Switzerland, um, in Scandinavia. We have consultants in um, Poland, uh, in France. Uh, we have a consultant in Italy um, joining us very soon. Um, and also United Arab Emirates. Um, we work with both students, uh, graduates and professionals. So we have consultants who specify, uh, specialize in students, uh, helping them getting internships or graduates, getting first jobs or professionals. Uh, we have a lot of free content, just like study free. Um, I'm sure uh, you can consume all of it. We have two YouTube channels. Um, they are in Russian. So for anyone who doesn't speak Russian, we will slowly move to English. But um, at the moment, it's all in Russian. Um, we have our Instagram account. We have EP Advisory Jobs Telegram channel where we post jobs abroad. Very interesting, cool um, roles at leading companies around the world, um, LinkedIn and Facebook. So. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, before I'm going to talk to you about CV, uh, for me, it's very important for you to understand how the recruitment system works. Why? Because very often when we look for a job, we're just sending the CVs there without understanding the other side and who is there and what are they doing with your CV. And when you understand how it all works for you to write the CV and to tailor it and to read the job descriptions, it will become much easier. I'm going to talk about very cool eye tracking study. So when they've um, analyzed eyes of people who read the CVs and um, um, I'll show you where they look so that you know which areas are the most important. We're going to talk about must haves of a winning um, CV in English. Um, I will show you good and bad examples so that you can visually with me together um, actually comment on the CVs. Uh, we will talk about keywords. Keywords is such a used uh, uh, term, but we find out that a lot of people don't even know what that means and uh, what what actually, um, which keywords you need to have in your CV. Um, and we're going to talk about mistakes as well. Uh, how I do uh, webinars and workshops, I really like to talk to you guys. So I really hope you will, uh, you will answer my questions and we're going to learn it together because I find that uh, by actually actively participating in the workshops, you will get much more out of it. So if you can um, help me out there, I would really appreciate it. Um, okay, so first thing first, um, I don't know what to do, maybe, yeah, like this I will do. Uh, first thing first is, um, how does the system work? Now let's look at how companies are looking for talent. Um, internal search, so how are companies looking for potential hires? What does it mean, internal search? I'm sure you know a lot of companies, specifically big ones, have intranet, so internal systems where they would post a job and anyone looking, working for this company anywhere in the world can apply for this job, can go through selection process and get the job. And the priority will always be for people who are already working for the company because they've been through training, they've been through um, certain things that a company doesn't need to do if it's someone external. Um, there are referrals. Um, this is very much overlooked element of job search. A very big hint for you. Um, in our um, experience, um, more than half of our clients uh, find jobs um, through referrals. So um, in some companies, let's say um, Google, Facebook, and Funk, uh, Meta now, not Facebook, uh, they even uh, prioritize people that come through referral. Uh, consulting companies do events when they say, guys, you're already working for us, bring your friends. And maybe there will be another um, job for them at our company. Uh, and it's very common for companies to use referrals as second uh, level of search. So why I'm, I'm telling this to you. So when you see a job posted online, it's number three external search. Um, 
this is last thing that company will do to find someone. So first thing, looking through own people, potentially promoting or anything, then referrals, referrals from employees. I don't know if it's a tech startup, a founder will reach out to its network to find someone who someone knows uh, through friends, through anyone. And only then there is an external search. So that is headhunting, recruitment agencies, job sites, um, a lot of companies before um, uh, pandemic were going to conferences and kind of fishing people there, um, etc. Yeah, so um, external search, last thing that happens. Um, who is reviewing your CV? Very, very important question. I wrote myself first recruiters, and now I'm going to ask you, who else is recruiting, uh, reviewing your CV? What do you think? Who is looking at your CV uh, when you send it? Hiring manager. Okay. HR. Okay. No, Probably hiring manager, manager of, the, of the project. Or yeah, project. that manager who is looking for, for this yeah. worker, for, for the his project. Manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, very good point. Do you think in terms of percentages, let's say um, with 100 applications, the first person that looks um, at, let's say 100 companies are looking for, for a person. Um, from these 100 companies, how many would have hiring manager checking the first uh, uh, pool of CVs that they receive? Maybe only the shortlisted candidates. Okay, so we are coming back to the fact that first review of your CV happens most likely not by hiring managers because they are too busy with other things. They will look at uh, your um, uh, CV later and very often when you already passed a certain stage. So first uh, uh, um, CV screen is very rare, uh, rarely done by um, hiring managers unless it's a very small company. So recruiters, who else is looking at your CV? Hiring manager as well. Maybe special department or, or, or the company who, which uh, like who doing such questions uh, about uh, all the workers. Uh, so like about, HR department, you mean? Someone yeah. from the HR department. Yeah, it could be someone from HR department. Um, it could be um, a HR administrator. It could be... Um, um, a, talent acquisition manager resources. So um, this recruiter, talent acquisition manager resource that is all the same thing of, of, of recruiter, basically. It's just different words. It's also important for you to know that sometimes recruiters are called talent acquisition managers in case you're reaching out to them on LinkedIn or something like this. HR managers, that's true. But what else do you think HR managers do if we're talking about specific title of HR manager, not recruiter, not talent acquisition, not resourcer? What do you think is a daily job of HR manager? I mean, there is a difference between HR and recruitment, right? As Absolutely. far as I can understand it, HR manager is responsible for the process after uh, the recruitment. <laughs> um, like, you know, um, the, the well-being of the, the employees yeah. and all the docs and you know, I don't know, insurances, all that stuff. Absolutely. So if we talk about, I studied HR. So HR is a very big, uh, um, like big topic, which includes recruitment. So recruitment is only one part of it. So there's also onboarding, how you're training people, how you are um, getting them into the company. There is contracts. Um, there are learning and development, like you said. There is uh, employee well-being and, and um, everything to do with that. There is um, compliance. There is employment law. There is so many things. So HR managers, if you see that, uh, um, you think that HR manager is looking at your CV, again, it might not be the case because for them, this is a very small thing that they um, do in, in their big, big day that, um, that they're managing. Um, HR managers would look at your CV or HR administrator, if it, again, if it's a small company. So if there is no one else except for this HR manager who does everything, and they also put on top their recruitment on this person, which means, again, this person has very, very little time on their hands. Um, HR managers can be called talent managers, people managers, head of people, head of talent, anything. 
um, algorithm, you said, computer. So this is called applicant tracking systems, um, ATS. Um, one thing I want to talk about applicant tracking systems is um, recently this term um, is used by a lot of um, CV design tools to scare you and say, oh, your CV is not passing the applicant tracking system. Oh, you're not going to be considered. Um, I'm gonna say it rude, but this is big BS, if you know what BS means, because um, I've worked with thousands of companies in the UK, abroad, in Europe, in America. Yes, in America, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you're looking at big companies like Microsoft, um, Amazon, um, no, Uber, uh, Klarna, any technological companies, the, unfortunately, applicant tracking systems are so bad still that still a person is looking at your CV. So yes, there could be filters that would a little bit filter the applications. It could be sometimes eligibility to work. It could be sometimes number of years um, required or um, industry required, but do not be fooled by this big applicant tracking systems and keywords. I will explain you what you need to pay attention to, but don't worry about algorithm, algorithms and computers, it's not as advanced yet, yet as everyone wants it to be. Tricky question, who else could be reviewing your CV? Apart from everyone related to HR and recruitment. Well, probably universities, <laughs> when they are uh, looking for, di for different students, especially as, um, well, I don't have such problem uh, with changing my uh, sp specialization because now I'm studying biotechno industrial biotechnology and I want to complete, uh, continue my, uh, uh, to get a master degree in uh, industrial biotechnology. But they told me that if uh, their previous education is not relevant, they probably will watch, uh, will look through the CV. Oh. Well, like if, uh, I don't know, a person was working <laughs> somewhere in biotechnological company, with, I don't know, economical aspects, but he needs to study the production processes so they will get... Uh, they Do you think it's a man or a, a woman talking? Say that again, did you hear? Ah, okay, so probably, yeah, universities. It's true, uh, um, absolutely at universities, you will have someone, but also um, think of... Um, for example, uh, a smaller company, maybe not a, a super large company with thousands of employees, uh, but it could be um, a receptionist that is looking at your CV. So um, in a small company of 20 people, they don't have a HR manager because they um, don't have the budget for it yet, or they, they are now invested into marketing or sales or anything. So they think, okay, I'm gonna give this job to look through CVs, through initial CV um, screen to an administrator or a receptionist. So it could be anyone uh, looking at your CV. And usually what happens, they would have a job description and your CV. So these are the two documents that any person who is looking at your CV will have. Why this is important to understand is a person who is checking your CV in many cases knows nothing about your field. Absolutely nothing. So if you're looking for a finance role, assume that whoever looks at your CV knows nothing about finance because recruiters can have 150 jobs they're filling. They physically cannot know all the 150 job titles and all the specifics of each job. Uh, HR talent managers have a thousand people to manage. They don't know all the job descriptions and everything that is required. Um, receptionist administrator doesn't know. Sometimes it could be CEO that is looking that has no time at all or doesn't know as well all the jobs. So bear, bear it in mind. Uh, next one, very important questions. How much time do you think whoever is looking at your CV spends on the initial CV screening, meaning they got the CV, they opened it, how much time they're gonna spend on deciding whether they're gonna continue looking at it or whether they're gonna close it. For about five seconds, no more. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, <laughs> 7. 7. 7.4 seconds. Uh, this sounds like a scary number uh, of seconds, and you might think, oh, they cannot be. 
uh, I would like to specify this 7.4 seconds is to decide whether I'm going to continue reading the CV or not. It's not to decide if you're a suitable candidate 100% or not. So it's just a decision process of closing or keeping open and reading later. Yeah. So you all guys have 7.4 seconds to make sure whichever job you're applying to, so that the person who opens the CV continues reading it. Yeah. Very important information. A study. Uh, the latter did a very big study on uh, um, eyes of recruiters. So what they do, not recruiters, but anyone who's opening the CV, I think specifically what, uh, they, those were recruiters here. So where they are looking and what they are checking in the CV. Um, and they've um, um, recorded all the data and everything. Um, so there are six main data points in your CV that you must um, have um, and must focus on, not even um, just have. Uh, obviously name, first the, the person will check your name. Second position is current job title and company. So um, coming back to here, a, a person would secondly look here. Yeah. So current job title and company. Yeah. Or here, you can see my uh, my cursor right where I'm pointing. Should be. Um, second, uh, uh, current job title and company. Third is previous job title and company. So they don't look at responsibilities just yet. So they check your job title company, uh, most current, then the second one underneath, most current, the second one underneath, then start date and end dates um, and uh, responsibilities as well. Um, and only then education. So uh, the king is your experience. Uh, and job titles first, and companies and dates, then, then responsibilities. Uh, what you cannot have in your CV, which is really important to understand, uh, mistakes. Uh, I'm talking about grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, anything. Quick question, <laughs> also a very big study. I don't really remember who was the company who did it. Uh, but they've spoken to 10,000 um, hiring managers, recruiters, um, everyone who is ever uh, taking people into their teams. Um, and they asked them how many mistakes are allowed on the CV. So the option was, I think, uh, zero, one, three, and five, something like this. How many mistakes are allowed on your CV by people who review your CV? What do you think? Zero. <laughs> Absolutely. So everyone said it's zero. So I'm here, I'm talking about nada, <laughs> no mistakes at all. And it's not only, uh, um, I don't know, very big, obvious mistakes, like uh, a school written in a, uh, in a wrong way, but it's also misspelling something. I don't know, double uh, letters. Um, it could be um, something that um, you've um, incorrectly put somewhere, uh, maybe a wrong word or anything. So just make sure you have nothing. I always recommend downloading Grammarly, uh, an app, just to run through the whole thing. Um, it has its flaws, of course, uh, Grammarly, but usually I would say it will uh, reduce the chances of you having big unnecessary mistakes that you shouldn't have. So Grammarly always helps. Um, then um, it's unprofessional look and feel. Here we're talking about um, different fonts, different colors on this CV. So for example, you um, wrote your CV uh, five years ago, now you're coming back to it, you wrote your most current job, and for some reason your most current job turned out to be in a little bit grayish color than all the others that are in black. And I can tell you, for a person who's seen 40,000 CVs, you see it immediately. You immediately see that there is a wrong uh, color, or you see that, for example, you've made bold your sections, and for some reason one section doesn't have bold. A an eye of a person who sees a lot of CVs will see that immediately, and that will reduce the chances of them continue reading the CV. I can give you a very um, visual example. Um, when I was a recruiter, and I, uh, I used to work with a um, big company, FMCG company, um, and a CEO was a brilliant guy. I think he spoke seven languages, um, international. They were based in Luxembourg and um, 
great guy and they were looking for a CFO so kind of a second after him person in the company and because it was an F FMCG company it was a very specific experience they were looking for so there were a, a lot of financial uh, um, reporting what different standards they had companies all around the world the CFO had to know all the different standards of um, finance and accounting as well in different countries and everything so it was basically very difficult to find someone and um, I remember I sent a short list of five people um, and obviously when you work um, in a recruitment agency you also edit the cvs a little bit before sending it but of course it's a very big volume you're not a career consultant that sits there for weeks at one cv to make it great and perfect and, and um, outstanding you you do it faster um, and i remember i sent the five um, cvs and um, he came back to me it's usually like you send a short list and the client comes back to you with some um something to discuss about the candidates and everything. And there was one guy who was perfect for the job and I had all my stakes uh, on him. So I was like, okay, he definitely is gonna get the job. And he was like, yeah, like this guy, like this guy, I like this woman and uh, this guy, I'm not gonna interview him. And I was like, and that was the guy I thought he was the most suitable. And I was like, why, well, why? He says, can you see his CV? I said, yes. And he says, look, there are bullet points when he's um, uh, talking about his responsibilities of the most current job. And after each bullet point, there is a dot. But all the other jobs where he talks about his experience and res responsibilities, he has a dot and a comma in the end of each bullet point. Um, so it's inconsistent. And if he allows this kind of inconsistency in his CV, what kind of C4 is he going to be in my company? So we are talking about super senior, great experienced guy and a CEO refusing to check his CV because of this little inconsistency of dots and here are not dots. Uh, so uh, it just shows you how uh, much the CV is a representation of who you are and is like a passport. It has to be really, really perfect. Um, poor readability. So um, I'll show you examples, I don't know, long paragraphs or too much white space or not enough white space or generally a bad layout uh, of the CV that is very difficult to, um, to read, etc. Example for you. Uh, this is the CV of one person um, who was a graduate. Uh, so you can see uh, page number one, page number two, page number three. Uh, I want you in this whole workshop, uh, consider yourself employer. Let's imagine you are a founder of the coolest startup in the world or a biotech company or anything you want or university or EP advisor, your study free, anything. And you're looking for people in, in, for your team. Yeah, You're growing, you've just raised 10 million pounds and you're looking for great people for your team. So. As a person who is looking at this CV for your team, can you tell me what is wrong with this CV? Maybe too much pages. As I know, uh, mostly recruits like when all the information is only, only on the one page. They don't want to look through all the pages. Could be very well. Um, I think for a graduate, uh, obviously three pages is a bit too much for sure. I would say ideally, is one page but for someone who has 10 15 years of experience to have two pages is totally fine um it's, it's not um uh, it's not uh, bad um it's too long um uh, xenia said um yes um what else um considering the 7.4 second rule so imagine let me make it like this for you so this is the first thing that person sees before he scrolls um to other pages too much for me uh, the work experience is on the third page. I just told you that work experience and job titles are the most important uh, and responsibilities as well, the most important part of your CV. I can tell you that half of people by opening the CV like this would close it immediately. Uh, because they would have to find work experience, which is on the third page. No one wants to do that. Uh, what else? What else is, is maybe not wouldn't be so appealing for you. Uh, the photo takes uh, so much space and uh, located uh, in the center. I think it's uh, not uh, like a CV moment. 
Mm -hmm. Big space for photo, personal information is too much, everything that you said as well. Do you see maybe that, for example, these sections, they're not the same. So here's the space, here's the space, but between this and this, there is no space. And um, it's a lot of spacing between each line as well. And um, even though all, all bullet points are um, even and everything, but it's just, you can see um, <laughs> a, big, a big space for the photo. Like um, he's so selfish, it's actually her. <laughs> so um, yeah, okay. Uh, design is a little bit boring. Mm, about design, I don't know, we'll talk about. Um, and I'll also show you um, some examples. Yeah, basically main mistakes. First page is not used for work experience. There's too much spacing everywhere. There are inconsistencies in how um, everything um, is presented. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's way kind of stretched out, um, unnecessary. Um, that's that's a part of most recent um, experience of the person on, on the CV. We've already established that experience is number one thing that you need to focus on um, in terms of uh, job search. Yeah, I'm sure if you apply to universities and studies, studies is also very important. But we are talking about job search, and when people are looking for um, people for their companies, they are checking um, experience. So, what what is what is not okay with this kind of um experience presentation too much words in one paragraph uh Artem, can you tell me like if you were to open the cv like honestly would you have mood reading all of this i'm not sure that i would, <laughs> you, would read on in all of this maybe it would be better to uh, highlight keywords in in this in this all the text like just yeah. to highlight it would improve the chance absolutely <laughs> it's just way too much information and unfortunately we have a very lazy eye and we don't want to we don't want to read so much we want yeah, uh, i stopped reading it after the second sentence exactly i got too lazy <laughs> yeah, yeah actually and this the same uh, i'm doing when i write in my cor course works i don't know uh, like look through the article just a few words exactly. and then yeah. no it's not the, the, the next one exactly. where we'll, we'll search for information uh difficult to read a cv without structure exactly that so no um no go here this one um i must say that the structure and design is absolutely perfect you have the company location dates you have the description of the company you have a job title very clearly um uh, visual but what what could be wrong with this cv um with this part of, of the cv of the person well the the first uh there is only like one short par paragraph for the in the first place and in the second place there are really lots of uh, mm -hmm. descriptions so that will make some questions okay i would also say there's a bit too many bullet points it's again coming back to your lazy eye and if, if a person has in one job so many responsibilities i appreciate that a lot a lot of uh, people do a lot of things in their jobs but you've got to have we call it a master cv from where you take responsibilities and narrow it down to the job you apply for uh, no headlines. They were headlines. It's just a part of the CV, but uh, uh, also very good point. Um, here, responsibilities. W what is wrong with it? I'm trying to show you all the different versions. <laughs> I think, again, um, yes, it is already bullet points, so it's not uh, like that, but do you agree with me that four lines for one bullet point is a bit too much? And do you again want to read all of this information? <laughs> I'm not sure. Probably we need some kind of keywords for re for each paragraph. Um, I will tell and, you. About and keywords. then some facts like uh, uh, what have done in in one two words, and then the the, the results probably. Yeah. So. Uh, it's just in terms of readability, it's all about uh, making it easy for the eye to, to read and um, understand what the person is saying. So um, 
What do you need to have in your CV? Work experience is the king. 50% of the first page has to be about your work experience, definitely. One to three pages length, we talk about it now. Um, I wouldn't say that there is a strict rule. The only strict rule that exists is for consulting and investment banking applications. It's got to be one page. Everywhere else, you are very safe with two pages. And if you have 15 plus years of experience, you can go for three. Longer than three, no. Try to cut it down. Uh, I'm sure it's possible. Clear, simple F pattern or E pattern layout. So you have sections, you have headlines, you have something bold and then bulleted. So it's kind of like E, my eye can follow really easily. So you make, you need to make it like user experience. You need to help the person read your CV with clear sections and clear flow. Um, I would recommend not to use font size smaller than 10.5. Somewhere between 10.5 and 12 is the most ideal um, size. Um, I would even say 11 probably is the best. And then readable fonts. You can go creative or you can stick to uh, standard ones. Times New Roman, mm, a bit difficult sometimes to read as well. So you can go for something a little bit easier on the eye, um, not so squared. Um, just like we saw, five to seven bullet points per job. So you can have in each job, seven if you want, but I would say five to seven is the best. You need to make sure that all the dates, all the names of the companies of your jobs and all locations are included. Included, uh, there is a mistake, you see. Uh, no questions left. What is important um, about this? Uh, all dates, um, names and locations, why it is. Um, if a person opens your CV, he knows nothing about you. He cannot guess anything. Imagine you have to be so clear that the person will have no questions. So if you're trying to, I don't know, you have a gap somewhere in your CV, write what was this gap about. If you worked in a different country, specify the location. You don't want a person to be sitting there and guessing because 7.4 seconds, no one has time for it. They will just close the CV and move on. So make sure you've included all the dates and what, um, uh, recruiters normally do, they would scan your CV in terms of the dates. So they would see, I don't know, you worked here, like you studied from this year to this year, then you started working from this year to this year, then new job from this year to this year. So they would go kind of from bottom up to make sure that you don't have gaps because gaps are not good. No one likes gaps. And these are the questions, what happened there? Why there is a big gap? You can explain it in your CV. There's no shame in that. Everyone has gaps. So you can take sabbatical leave. You can take a gap year to travel. You can um, I don't know, change careers, study something new. It's all great. As long as it's clearly kind of specified in your CV. Um, consistency. So use same punctuation marks, styles, dots, and uh, commas, and everything. Make sure everything is um, correct. Save your file in name, surname, CV format. The amount of CVs I've seen throughout my career, uh, which are called just CV. So for me, if there is any kind of storage uh, on, on the computer or in the database of a company, and please don't think that every company has the most perfect cloud systems and all of that, it's not, we are not there yet. So usually a recruiter would save the CV somewhere to some folder. So obviously you will make a life of that person much easier if you will have your name, surname, and CV. Why CV? Because you might have a cover letter attached as well. So that would be CL or cover letter there as well. But um, do not name your CVs, CV for PwC, CV for uh, Google. Uh, even though you can and you should have different CVs for different companies and different jobs, but create an internal system on your computer where you will have a folder called Google and you will have your CV there. Uh, because uh, what happens is when you send a CV which is called CV for Google, um, I, if I'm uh, working for Google, have a little bit, um, I don't trust you then. For me, it feels like you've modified your experience to fit me, even though it's the right thing to do and you should be doing it. 
but I'm like, mm, not sure. So ideally, you would make everyone feel who opens your CV that it is the one and only CV that you have, and it's your password, and it's just your name, surname, and the word C. Uh, file format, always PDF. There's no negotiations about it. There is no Word, there is no Google Doc uh, pages. It has to be in PDF. Why? We've done a research um, in terms of um, companies and um, um, their hiring uh, processes. And uh, we found out, we've spoken, I think, to 300 companies and 87% uh, of people said that they check the CVs very often, the initial CVs on their phone. So they don't sit there in front of a computer. No, they are on their tube uh, in London and they, they received the CV. They quickly checked it, whether to continue with it or not to decide. And if it's in Word or any other document, it can move on mobile. So PDF is the only format that makes it stick to the same layout so that it's clean and nice when you look for it. Um, whoever reads your CV needs to understand that you are suitable for this particular job. Uh, what it means, um, a lot of times when we start working with our clients on their CV, uh, we, um, start, uh, we, we have, we're having the initial consultation, we discuss with them the experience, everything, and then we open the CV to write it because at EP Advisory, we, we write the CV for you. Uh, uh, and uh, we are like, oh, but you don't have this included in your CV. You told me that you did this. Yeah, I did. Oh, and this you don't have. Yeah, but come on, everyone knows that a marketing manager does it. No. <laughs> No one knows nothing about your job and about your uh, experience. You have to write everything that you've done that is relevant for this particular job. You have to mention every um, tool that you use. I don't know if you use Excel or if you use um, uh, Canva or anything else that is relevant for this job. You shouldn't assume that everyone who is in marketing knows how to use uh, Google Analytics. It's not the case. No one is gonna guess. I can tell you more. I have people who didn't mention their languages on their CV. And for example, it was a Russian speaking job. They've applied for a Russian speaking job. Let's assume their name was Ivan Ivanov and they didn't mention Russian and they were rejected because a company is not gonna guess, even if your name is Ivan Ivanov and you studied in Moscow, if it's not written in your CV that you speak fluently Russian, I'm not gonna guess. So make sure you have everything required there to uh, um, make everyone know who opens your CV that you're suitable for this job. Uh, yeah, anyone want to ask something? No, okay, uh, so the layout of the CV. Someone might say it's boring, fair enough, uh, but this is the CV we have at EP Advisory, the design of the CV that got our clients jobs um, in all around the world, in the best companies in the world, and everyone comes back to us and says, throughout the recruitment process, uh, people commented, that my CV was the best. <laughs> uh, and I will explain why. Um, of course, there are design things. Of course, you can add colors and this and that. But again, CV is your passport. You can show your personality through your interview, through your cover letter, through your portfolio. But your CV is factual information about you. Your passport is not a colorful, super creative thing. Um, so how do you structure the CV? First name, surname, then you put the city and country you are in, your phone number, your email address. Again, how many times there were CVs without contact details? Please do not uh, forget about it. LinkedIn link, you have to have LinkedIn profile if you're looking for a job abroad without LinkedIn, doesn't work. And whoever tells me that in Russia, LinkedIn is blocked. Yes, you can have VPN and everything will work absolutely perfectly fine. Then you will have a profile section. So it's a little summary in terms of uh, who you are as a person, what are your main skills, um, uh, where you worked, uh, um, something could be, I don't know, if you are changing career, you can explain a little bit what happened. Um, then there is key competencies or achievements. These are usually bulleted um, um, couple of words. These are actually the key words. Um, again, I will explain to you about them a little bit later. Um, so these are technical skills that you have. So it's not hardworking, organized, or team player. This is forecasting, financial modeling, um, social media marketing, um, I don't know, 
and data analysis, data science. So any hard skill that you have, by hard, I mean something you're doing with, with your brain, basically, and not just through, through your personality. We say that it's absolutely mandatory for experienced professionals and recommended for students because sometimes we find that for, um, for students or graduates who don't have so much experience, it's very difficult to get those hard skills because they haven't really applied their knowledge anywhere, but you can still try to, to have it. Then would be work experience or education, depending on who you are. So here, education is after work experience, but obviously if you're a student or graduate, a uh, very recent one, you can move education over your experience. So you would have profile, key competences, education, and then work experience. But work experience will still be 50% of the first page. If you do it uh, dense enough, you will be able to fit um, your work experience kind of at the second part of the page. Uh, work experience is company name, city, country, dates, then little company information. Why we have company information here is because not everyone knows the companies you work for. And um, if it's a venture fund or a cool startup or a growing company or a company with 3000 stores throughout Russia, you can write that to, to kind of explain a little bit where you're coming from and we, where your experience is coming from. Then it would be a job title, um, clearly indicated, and then bullet points. So again, we are coming back to kind of E-shape um, work experience um, design. Um, bullet points, explaining what you did. Uh, yes, you have to use keywords, but please always base the keywords on your experience and what you did and then read the job description and adopt it. So first you sit down and think of what everything you did and how you did it. Um, you write it down, then you see how um, it's written in job descriptions and then you amend it depending on uh, what they have. Um, in terms of education, you put your university location dates um, and degree. You can put your grades. Uh, if you studied um, um, in Russian CIS, that could be, um, if it was when I was studying a long time ago, uh, that was a five-year program. So you can put five-year program if it's relevant to anyone. Um, but apart from that, you can put some courses uh, that you've studied, but please don't write like this, all the courses that you've studied at university. Most important is um, your degree, uh, um, kind of the program that you did um, and place where you did it basically. Um, then certificates. Um, certificates is a little bit different to courses. So certificates is something that you usually study for a year or two, ACCA, CFA, any kind of finance, big certificates that you get or in private banking or anywhere. You would you could make them separately and then would go skills and other recall them. So here would be your languages, your IT skills, professional training for young guys, uh, for, for students and graduates, we recommend including research interests. So that can show a little bit your personality and uh, what you're interested in, in terms of your career going forward. And also um, your personal interest. This is, this is an interesting thing uh, in terms of interest. Um, we actually had quite a few people um that got jobs based on their interests i give you an example um we had a um, a graduate um she was um, studying um it was related to museum management a very niche uh specialization and it was very hard for her to find a job uh, but she managed also with visa support uh we helped her uh and the thing about her was um she messaged one company on linkedin again, which you should do. Uh, and um, she sent the CV and um, a managing director was like, you know what, um, we don't have anything yet, but maybe in a couple of months, uh, we have something, please message me again. It's your job then to put it in your diary to message this person two months from that moment or three months. Um, so um, three months passed and she did message him uh, to say <coughs> blah, blah, blah. He told me to uh, to message you again. I was wondering if you if you are interested um, in in talking. And he said, Ah, you're the girl who is playing no piano or whatever. And she was like, Yes, she was playing like an unusual instrument. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, I uh, I remember you. Sure, let's talk. She actually got a job with this company. So you need to know that some. Um, directors and uh, people who check your CV, especially not recruiters and HRs, but if you go into smaller companies where 
I don't know, a hiring manager or an executive would look at your CV. They actually check your interests. Um, another example, uh, um, one fund manager um, in uh, Berlin, um, he always would ask at the interview, what are your hobbies? Because for him, a person without a hobby is no goal for his team because he wants a person to have some interest outside the work. And I don't know if you're playing tennis or something, you're competitive, you're active, et cetera. So um, it's, it's an important part. Obviously it shouldn't be 50 lines, but one line with things that you do, don't put here um, skiing uh, or I don't know, traveling, reading books and dancing because this is not specific enough. If you, if you do something professionally like swimming or tennis or marathon running or anything like that, you can put it there, but um, just think of something special about you. Um, I know there are people um, that are looking for jobs in German speaking countries. I've seen Austria and Germany um, as well. And we always get a question like, oh, but in Germany, everyone wants a um, um, picture on their CV. As you can see here, there is no picture. There is no details about your date of birth, your gender, your um, anything here. It's just city, country, phone name, email address, LinkedIn link, because anything else, um, could be discriminative. So if you have here your date of birth and someone is not uh, calling you, you can sue them because you think they, they are not calling you because you're too young or too old. Um, German speaking countries, a little bit different story. Uh, so this format will work for anywhere. I know that uh, um, it, it works in America, it works in the UK, it works in Netherlands, in Switzerland, uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, depends where the photo could be better, but that also works. I can tell you basically, I've seen, I've showed this um, format even to people um, in Berlin that work for startups, all the um, uh, recruiters. Um, and I said, look, there's no um, picture. Is it bad? And I got 10 out of 10 un uh, answers no, because if we need to see how the person is looking, we can go into his LinkedIn profile and everything is going to be fine. So it's actually quite nice for me to read and it's easy to read. On the contrary, one guy in Berlin once, one time said that people are going crazy with creativity and his craziest case was a guy sent his CV and to open the CV, this recruiter had to do a quiz on Star Wars to be able to actually, I don't know, open the document. <laughs> and he said that was way too much. And like, he was like, no, please don't do that because uh, I just want to see the CV. But he remembered it. So it's something to remember, but um, this standard boring format works for any country, any um, recruiter. Um, if you want to have a, 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 a kind of more German style, so Austria, Germany, Switzerlandish as well, um, I recommend um, alternative German speaker alternative of um, LinkedIn is Xing. It's H-I-N-G. Um, and they have inside of Xing, they have Lebenslauf, um, which means CV in German. So you can just Google Lebenslauf Xing. And you will go to this website. It's called livingslaw.com. Um, here, um, is, you see, I'm service from Sync. Um, oops, sorry. Um, what it does, it gives you here already um, all the templates and it actually parses information from Xing, but you can do it yourself. Here you would have a date of birth where you were born um, and again, experience, um, education, and then um, everything else comes there. I find this kind of the, the nicest with picture design um, alternative that there is on the internet. Um, okay, let me see what are the questions there. Um, Um, you put CV in country in ECU. What if I'm ready to relocate within the country? Where uh, every time HR asks me about it, what should I write there? Katrina, very good question. Uh, I would say you have, you, I would do A B testing it's called. Uh, so you can try one way and another way and see which one works best. We do that with our clients. We say, if you're based in Moscow and you want to work in London, if you have a UK mobile number, you can put London, UK and put a mobile number, you can mobile number, but be ready that when if, uh, someone asks you where you are and you say, I'm in another country, they will not be happy about it. If it's, if it's the case where you are changing 
inside the country to this different city, you can put potentially the, the potential city where you want to work and just explain that um, I have, um, I don't know, accommodation sorted there already. So I'm kind of in a process of moving. So I would say like this. So basically for anyone who is interviewing you, you need to tell them that you are all set and ready and you're with one foot there already in, in a different city or country or anything. If we're talking about visa restrictions, that's a different story. They will ask you, well, okay, you are based in Singapore now and you want to work in Munich. How, how are you in Munich already? Uh, what kind of visa are you on? So be careful with that. But if it's within the country and um, it doesn't matter in terms of visa, you can put... Um, um, yeah, you can put uh, another city and you can put in your profile that you're willing to relocate. Absolutely. So my favorite keywords, <laughs> what are the keywords and why you need to include them in your CV? Um, I just took a job. Oops. I just took a job uh, from um, LinkedIn. It was a marketing plan engagement associate. By the way, the word associate doesn't always mean someone very experienced because it sounds very fancy and very high level, but it's not. Uh, very often it's a kind of couple of years of experience job. Same goes for the job title executive. Very often you would associate executive with chief executive officer uh, and kind of high level, uh, um, but actually executive is the lowest in the career chain for most of the jobs. So marketing executive is the most uh, entry-level job, um, HR executive, uh, sales executive, client relationship executive, etc. It, it will all be kind of on the bottom of the career ladder. So a job. Um, here's the description. I hope you can see it. Now is going to be the most difficult part. Uh, I highlighted everything, everything that they have written about their uh, their um, potential candidates, so uh, responsibilities and what they're looking for. I want you to tell me where are the keywords. Tell me, what, what do you think are the keywords? Uh, while you're thinking, Nina, um, well, there is a thing called uh, also known as uh, or um, AKA, I think it's uh, so you can put your surname, the current surname and in brackets, AKA uh, your uh, marital before before marriage. Um, my nationality is in the personal info. Isabella, if your nationality influence your, for example, visa status, so if you are a EU, um, visa, uh, EU passport holder, of course, you should mention that in your profile section. The verbs of all the bullet points that you will be doing. Second part, requirements. Second part, requirements, partially the verbs, no. Mm, I don't know how to make this sound like, no. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, second part requirements, that's the most common answer. It is yes, but it's not the main part of um, keywords. Again, let's think as a person who is hiring. You are looking at this CV, you want this person, you want to find the person who can do this job. What you want them to know how to do. Well, maybe the last paragraph of that, like what you'll bring. So these are requirements. So bachelor degree, two years of marketing, relationships, hands-on experience with CMS, proficient Microsoft Office. Yes, but imagine you started your job yesterday as um, a recruiter, or I don't know, a receptionist somewhere. And a, a, a manager comes to you and says, I want to find a client and um, a client engagement associate for my team. Here's a job description from these 100 CVs, select 10. Uh, I remember there was another shop, workshop about CVs. They told that uh, their CV must be like an answer for the questions of uh, employer, like they have, uh, the number the list of problem and pro problems and uh, their future candidate uh, should cover all of them it's not only problems you already have bulleted points of what this person will be doing in this job 
So you as a person who is going to look through 100 CVs, what you're going to be checking, which part of the person's CV you're going to be checking against which part of this uh, job description? Probably his person, uh, personal skills, like probably nope. some extra skills. Nope. No soft skills. <laughs> no. You would be looking at job responsibilities of that person. Of, of course, if in the uh, last two jobs, like I said yeah. in the very beginning, against what is written here in the first part, okay. what you will be doing. Yeah. So basically, the only thing you will actually be doing is making sure that the person who applied for this job can do all of this. And how you can check it if he has ever done it before. So when we talk about keywords, it's not a, um, verbal communication skills because communication skills can have any person. It could be a lawyer, it could be a finance person, it could be a marketer, it could be anyone. But copywriting and creating presentations or uh, managing co co corporate website will only be able to do the person who is doing this job somewhere else. So your job when applying for a job is to make sure that your CV and job responsibilities in your work experience section cover those ones of the job description. So keywords here. So keywords is somewhere where a person who is reviewing your CV will look for in your CV. Corporate website, social media, newsletter. I want a person, events as well, I want a person to be able to know how to manage a newsletter. I want a person to be able to copyright. I want a person to be able to have SEO in his CV, which means search engine optimization, a very specific skill that the person is doing. They will need to understand how the website analytics works, how Google analytics works, how um, keyword uh, um, searches on search engines work and everything. Client and competitor information. I want a person to be able to prepare client reports, client presentations, any kind of uh, things. Here, I didn't highlight customer service because it's also part of kind of client work because here is a CRM, CRM is client relationship management. So if a person is applying for this job, I want to make sure that he knows how to manage clients. And look at here, the job is called marketing and client engagement associate. And you can very clearly see that marketing responsibilities come first. So first four responsibilities, are marketing responsibilities, which means if you are working as a client relationship manager with a bit of marketing responsibilities, you need to swap them in your CV. So you need to show them that the top five responsibilities oops, of this job description match your top five responsibilities. Of course, you shouldn't uh, do that only, um, sorry, you shouldn't do that only to rewrite it, but you have to make sure that whoever opens your CV, coming back to the first slides, understands that you can do all of this. They understand that this you can do with closed eyes tomorrow. Here is CMS. So in your skills section or in your responsibilities, you should mention that you've managed WordPress and Squarespace. You should newsletter, MailChimp, Send in Blue. These are the platforms that uh, uh, enable email marketing. You are proficient MS Office and Creative uh, Suite. So it's also um, your creative skills in terms of marketing and presentations and all of that stuff. Again, it's all matched. If you, if you are able to read the job description this way, you will know that a person who have, uh, that a person who has this in his CV clearly stated in responsibilities and in skills will get an invite for an interview. It's that simple. So you need to read job descriptions and you have to adopt your CV for every job you apply because this will 
dramatically increase your chances of getting a call back because I know, I know it's annoying. I know it's a lot of time. I know that you hated to do that. I know that because we do that with every client and it's very annoying. And of course it's, it's very annoying, but every person is doing different things in their job. And if a company is looking for this specific responsibility list, they will invite people who can do that. And the only way for them to know if you can do that is check your work experience section. And this is number one thing. And second thing, they will check your skills section. So if you have all of those technical things there. Communication skills, yes, you can argue that this is a skill, but again, communication skill doesn't define you as a, as a marketing and client engagement specialist because a good communicator could be in any other, other industry, but knowing SEO or email marketing or social media is defining you as a as a person suitable for this job. Do you know what I mean? Um, another very important thing that I want to tell you is um, please know that people make things happen. Very often when we apply for jobs, it's a very exhausting, very terrible process, full of rejections, full of um, effort that you put in and you get nothing back um, out of it. Um, and I know it's very frustrating, but think that a person behind this screen, it's a person. It's not a, a computer. You don't just send your CV somewhere and it's, it's landing in ATS and some uh, robot is checking it. There is a person sitting. So if you've applied for a job and you got a no, reply to this email if it's a if it's an email received from a person, of course, there is automated emails, which you shouldn't reply to. But if it's not, reply to that person saying, thank you. I would really uh, be happy to consider it for other jobs. Just two days ago, our client applied for a Facebook job. Um, she got an email saying, Meta, that it wasn't suitable. Uh, she wasn't suitable for this particular role, but she exchanged like three emails with the recruiter, which ended up in her being invited for three other jobs. So make sure you build this network, this people uh, network, um, and you're nice to people in this process, even though you feel completely demotivated, stressed, and angry, and annoyed most of the times. If you had an interview and it didn't go through, still send a thank you message. Even if you got a rejection letter, still say a thank you message. If someone reaches out to you on LinkedIn to offer a job, even if you're not looking, even if it doesn't matter for you at this point, just tell them, thank you very much for reaching out, but it's not interesting for me in the few, at the moment. Let's keep in touch. Simple, very short message, but be human because people, this recruiter will go to another role. This uh, managing director will open another company. You never know where this opportunity will come from. So make sure you are professional and nice to people who you interact with throughout your um, recruitment process or uh, job search process because people make things happen is very important the bonus we have 10 percent discount on all the service packages and consultations through our website uh, with the code study free 10 uh, so feel free to use it um, the best case to start working with us is going to let's talk on our website and booking 25 minutes consultation it's only 25 pounds uh, but we will kind of talk you through your experience, we'll make an audit and then suggest the best um, option to go forward um, in terms of the packages. You can check the packages in the service section. We have a lot of free resources, like I said, um, that you want to check um, before calling also. So um, feel free to do that. And now I'm all yours to answer any of your questions. Let's go to the chat. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What could you suggest for students with limited experience or in case of changing the field of work? Um, um, Yekaterina, very good question. Um, I suggest looking for a job from day one of you arriving at whatever location you're going to study um, because it's a deal breaker for any student um, or graduate. If you're graduating with zero experience or if you're gradu graduating with very little experience, it's a very big downfall and you're going to lose the competition against everyone else who has got the experience. 
I got um, to, to, to London to study when I was um, 18. And I came in September and in October, I was working in a shoe shop as a sales assistant. I know it's not fancy. And in 2021 or 22, I would definitely get an office job. But at that time um, in 2008, it was actually okay uh, to work uh, in a shoe shop and uh, nothing too bad. <laughs> uh, so um, you need to have a work experience. And then if you're changing career or if you have limited experience, try to highlight as much as you can. Think of any projects you've done. Think of any, um, maybe even as part of your university. A lot of universities do real projects with real companies. You can put it there. You can say, look, we've done a marketing strategy for this and this startup as part of this um, subject uh, or this, uh, um, I don't know, yeah, subject uh, of, of your module, um, of your um, studies. So that's, that's uh, very good. Uh, does it make sense to put in CV non-relevant experience if you're a student and don't have anything else? Um, yes, um, if, uh, but just know that you can still modify your experience. So there is no shame at all in a little bit changing the job, job title, a little bit amending the job description, as long as you can very confidently explain what you did. So for example, a person can be doing one million thing in their job. And for one particular job, they just chose half of, to show half of it because it makes no sense to show everything else. So always try to make your experience as close to what the company is looking for. Of course, there are also companies that look for completely entry-level uh, students and graduates with no experience. Um, and there you can just do uh, whatever you have in your CV. That would be absolutely fine. I think I just want to jump in here for a second. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for such a great presentation. I um, just wanted to add here that definitely your experience in any student organizations is going to be very Absolutely. valuable, whatever you're doing right now in your home country um, or when you get to your destination, your study destination. Um, this is exactly how I wrote my resume when I was a student. Um, I was part of several organizations. One of them out of all was a dance group. Um, so I was part of a dance, uh, salsa dance group. And even from there, you could take a lot of the experience and um, what's called transferable skills right and describe them in your resume so depending what your next job is going to be you can think of what skills you've gained through that experience and put them and highlight them on your resume so most definitely i second what you're uh, saying salsa example very good example i also danced since my whole life since i was four um for example if you are part of a salsa group um the thing that I thought of, for example, you could have um, organized events or you can and I did, actually. <laughs> yeah, you can manage communities. So this is all transferable skills, very good term that I haven't used, but it's a very, very good term. So you need to think of what you actually did. And when we work with clients, it's very often we, we drag it out of them. So we say, okay, you were part of a salsa uh, community or group. What did you do? Well, we actually organized uh, uh, five competitions for hundred people. We did this, we did this. Did you, talk, tick, did, did you talk with sponsors? Yeah, we actually fundraised for like 3000 euros. Oh, okay, so you know how to talk with sponsors. You know how to fundraise. You know how to do event management. You know how to uh, do, I don't know, admin stuff and so on. So it's a lot of things that you can definitely draw from. So it's a very good uh, commentary. Uh, Nadia, is it better to have a CEO design according to your example or Europass? I hate Europass with all my heart because it's so difficult to read with these columns and the whole thing there in one side and here's another side. I don't like it. There's a few companies that prefer Europass and that would be um, uh, international organizations. We did have uh, recently, I think out of 2,300 clients, we had maybe two who needed Europass. Uh, CV and that was I think in Belgium uh, we have a consultant in Belgium I think there was a girl who was applying for um, um, Euro Commission or something like this in Belgium and she needed a Euro pass it was a requirement but most of the times you don't you don't need it at all at all um, to put too many short-term challenges experience does it scare HRs frankly yes because um, it's commitment issue you will be unfortunately you will be viewed as someone who is um, um, job hopper it's called so like you, you you hop from one job to another all the time I don't find it bad if it's the 
place where you look for, uh, for, for your profession, when you explore yourself, um, that's, that's not so bad, but I would narrow it down maybe to three, four, if you can. Um, and again, you can divide them. You can put something in job description, in work experience section, you can put something in other section um, as well to just like make sure that you space it out a little bit. Um, because uh, a rule is like this is always a question mark if a person worked for a company for less than six months. Why? Because, um, well, in the UK, it's three months probation period in Germany it could be six months or in German speaking countries or generally in Europe. Um, and a company would always think, well, did, did she or he not pass the um, probation period or like, why did they leave? Did, did they not find a personal fit to the company, was something wrong with them. Again, it could be nothing wrong. And if you explain it and present it well, it's your advantage that you've tried so many different things before figuring out what you like. But people are biased and people are um, making decisions in seven seconds. So it could put them off for sure. Please give the main advice about how to get my first job. Uh, the main advice is to knock at every door that exists and be super active in networking in LinkedIn um, and be very, very eager to add value to anyone's life. So um, offer your services, think of the main skills you have, think of the things you like the most if you have no experience at all or what is easiest to you in, in, during studies, what was the easiest for you, I don't know, calculating things, doing presentations, talking to people, etc. And just offer for free um, anything, just get any type of experience um, to have in your CV. And as soon as you have the first job, it makes um, things much easier. So just try to be an intern anywhere bombard people with how great uh, um, you how much effort and dedication you're going to have and um, do research about companies show that you care so uh, message your company say look I've, I've checked your uh, background I, I've seen you doing this 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 and this this is so great I, I want to do this maybe there's anything I can help you with I can do this I can do this I can do this please let me know and then it works <laughs> Uh, I also had experience in event management and student communities, not really sure it's relevant for analytics or finance. Um, again, um, Katerina, if you did, uh, um, if, you, if you were treasurer in communities or societies, student societies, why not? We have a lot of students who were treasurers that got jobs um, in consulting and banks and everything. So you can definitely add that. You can add analytics. I don't know, maybe you did some sort of uh, competitor analysis or market research uh, as part of your um, community work or society work, why not? Um, it could really um, help you um, get the job. You need to show them you have the hard skills. You need to show them that you can do something. If it's Excel, if it's uh, um, competitor analysis or any type of research um, that is relevant for data analysis and data management, that would be good enough. Anything else? Oh, and I did this very, very kind. Yeah, I have a question about, um, could you please send us the example of the CV, or, or like the form where we could just fill in our facts about ourselves, like the, the, that we, which you have shown us. We are working on it right now. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have the tech solution yet, but it's actually in the making right now. Uh, so I would, I would, what I can do, um, uh, Vitalina, maybe I can, uh, uh, Victorian, sorry, uh, maybe I can share a, 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 a Word document template or something like this. Yeah, something can, like that. Uh, can, like just the, the, the design of the, the yeah, yeah, absolutely. I actually, partly uh, know what I will put in my CV. I have some kind of oh, month internship uh, according to my, mm -hmm. which is re relevant for my, uh, for my uh, <laughs> specialization. And probably it would be okay to put, I don't know, some kind of that to uh, like um, any publication uh, 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 taking part in conference, uh, yeah, like three short th theses about schooling production by yeast to, Absolutely. As much as you can put, mm -hmm. think of, of hard skills. So think of things that you actually did. So if it was conferences, um, you participated, um, I don't know, maybe you've uh, 
um, secured some uh, connections there um, that could be relevant. Think of maybe um, contracts that you could potentially sign or anything like that. So just um, think of hard skills that you can bring to the company. Yeah, actually, mostly it's for universities, so they, they don't have such really hard requirements of CV, mm, but still, <laughs> it, that must be that must look nice. I think yes. my CV before. I, I send it. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. And we'll definitely Thank share. You. So we'll share the recording. And we'll share any additional um, resources uh, from EP Advisory with you guys, so you can use them and make your best CV. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much, Elisabetta, for, for everything. Um, I think it's been a really great and uh, very practical workshop. Um, yeah, guys, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to share them in your chat groups and we'll be sure to pass them along. Uh, we'll be sharing the recording and any resources shortly. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I just want to say that you're really great and the fact that you explain everything so well, especially like in my industry, I don't really need a CV, but I still enjoy it every second of your presentation <laughs> because it's so well thought out and like every detail and you just explain everything like, you know, with no extra, but not nothing that you missed and I really enjoyed it so thank you thank you that's very kind uh, thank you and I hope it helps I hope you will put ahead on employer when you do the applications and we'll think how they <laughs> think to get what you want um, with a CV or without a CV whatever your industry is okay guys it was really lovely um, having you Victoria thank you so much for inviting love the community everyone is so warm and welcoming and um, I loved how active you were we talked with Victoria maybe you're going to be a little bit shy but you actually were absolutely wonderful so thank you That's so much great absolutely yeah. yeah we'll definitely do more workshops together so okay. stay tuned and um, yeah we'll be back soon thanks thank so much you. have thank a great you. night everyone bye 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 thank you bye